Alex is on? Yes. Rita, that was beautiful. It was beautiful. And true. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking, I don't think I can follow that. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you. Well, here I am. The founding of the National Book Critics Circle in the early 70s was a singular idea. The collective intelligence of John Leonard, Ivan Sandroff, Nona Balakian was not merely unique, it was welcome and it was needed. It was a kind of wild faculty of sorts, dedicated to books and their scrutiny. Passionate people, eager to laud and reward the best. And then the years passed, and this organization became more than unique. It became necessary for writers everywhere. Now, finally, it's more than unique and more than necessary. I think it's urgent. The publishing world is in flux, facing new kinds of distribution. Bookstores are shuttering, shutting or reassigning themselves. Companies merge to avoid collapse. This is the situation which may change, but what I know will always be available is the National Book Critics Circle. And I want you to know how delighted and honored I am to join that long and distinguished list of authors and accept this lifetime award. It really means a lot to me. You know, when I published my first novel, The Bluest Eye, the reception was, I'm going to say slight. <laughs> Indifferent even hostile. It's still very much a popularly banned book, which I accept because I'm in such good company. <laughs> well, I do remember reading one critic in a I guess it was the New York Times, maybe not, I think so who said some things, and then he said, I think she writes just to avoid cliché. I thought, well, that... <laughs> Isn't that a compliment? Apparently not. But whatever the point. The novel was not, I'm sorry, the novel was not taken seriously. Actually not until John Leonard read it and took it very seriously indeed. And it wasn't about whether he liked it, The Bluest Eye. It was that he gave it his best judgment on its merit. And I will always be grateful to him for that. Now, I'm not clear what the category was in 1972. 
when that book was published, whether the category was African American, black, Afro American. But what I do remember that books written by black writers were given their own shelves in bookstores, just like women's books or detective stories or what have you. And it was unlikely for my book to be shelved alphabetically, which I so much desired. Which is not to say authors objected to that convenience, or certainly that customers did not appreciate it. It is to say that the same separation existed in the criticism. Those were the days when the book of poetry by a black writer, along with a novel by a black writer, along with a collection of essays by another black writer, were reviewed together in one article. And the reviewer, who was white, could and did decide which among those three separate genre was the best. And I recall during my days at Random House actually choosing, insisting that books by black writers appear in separate seasons in order to avoid that sad merging of text simply because of the race of the author. Now all or almost all of that has certainly changed now. Angela Davis's autobiography is no longer compared to Gail Jones' novel, Coria de Dora. Tony K. Bambara's collection of short stories Gorilla, my love, is not paired with Huey Newton's To Die for the People. <laughs> and happily, Muhammad Ali's autobiography, The Greatest, <laughs> is not evaluated or measured against the Soledad brothers or George Jackson's Blood in My Eye. James Baldwin, so far, is not paired with August Wilson. Well, much of that conflication and the mixing of genres, according to race, has disappeared. And the disappearance is primarily due to the labors of literary critics in this organization. Now, the National Book Critics Circle has grown and eagerly faces the challenges and opportunities of contemporary publishing. The challenges of online books and blogs and self-publishing self and e-books. There are all sorts of new presses, private presses, small ones. And there's a general move of the newspaper industry's preference for light entertainment and gossip. But so far, these don't seem to have deterred the National Book Critic Circle's agenda. In fact, in its expansion, it works even more to confront, to alter, and expand the possibilities of publishing, the training of young writers, their encouragement, and its efforts working within the entire literary community. 
the list of authors who have been awarded this lifetime award is judicious and it's enviable and I have to say I am delighted to be among them. Thank you.